He then brought some curds of milk, curds and milk, and the calf had been had been prepared, and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? They said. There, in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Tonight's second reading is taken from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. It's entitled, At the Home of Mary and Martha. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, they came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Amen. Thank you to our readers. Um, we just like to reflect on those readings as I ask the worship team to come up and lead us in worship and praise. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Would you like to stand and join us as we sing a few songs of praise and worship? Of what I've done, but 
And I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. Lord, we just thank you so much for the opportunity we have to all meet together tonight. Thank you that, although it's cold outside, we can all be warmed by your presence and your love in this place. We think of those people less fortunate than us, Lord, and we just pray that as we bring our gifts and offerings to you, Lord, that you'll help us to use it to help others and to further your kingdom. Amen. Okay, um, and now I'd just like to ask Andile to come up. He's going to be sharing with us tonight. Um, and I'll just pray for him quickly before you begin. Thanks. Thank you. Lord, we just thank you so much for Andile and um, for him to be able to come and share with us tonight. We just pray that yeah, you would just speak through him and open our eyes, um, our ears, and our hearts as we yeah, get to hear your word and hope that it will just change our lives and um, yeah, help us to grow closer to you. Amen. Thank you. Good evening. I think you can tell that I'm a student by the way, by the place I choose to sit in. We never sit in the front because you might find yourself being asked questions that you would not be able to answer. As I was coming here, I struggled with something that I could not understand. That it's difficult to come to a place where you need to share the word of God and you are not really part of that community. You do not live amongst those people that you are going to speak to. Therefore, you do not know what their struggles are. And as someone who somehow caught up at seminary, I live in the same yard, go to church the same yard, and go to classes in the same yard, and the library is in the same yard. So my life is somehow in one place. Therefore, <laughs> probably that means my social skills would not be so good because I meet the same people every day. <coughs> now, I, I'm struggling with what is the message that one then brings to people when you, you, you come from a, a context like that one. But looking at the readings that we've had today and also considering that in South Africa or in the world, we consider tomorrow or the week that comes, uh, that is um, coming through to us as the Mandela Day and, or Mandela Week. Uh, we remember Nelson Mandela through participating in activities of service. And therefore, when I look at the scripture that we, we read in, in both the Old and New Testament, the one in the Old Testament, we find Abraham sitting in his yard and he sees three men coming and he offers them service. He offers them hospitality. He wants to help them. He, he becomes part of the community that wants to help people. These are strangers to him. But as he, they approach, he offers his home, he offers a meal, and he does something for strangers. And when we go to the New Testament, we also find two women, Mary and Martha. They have a visitor, Jesus and his disciples. And they do the same thing. They offer service. They become hospitable. And for me, I think there's a relationship between these scriptures and what is happening in our country. But also looking at the chapter in Luke, Chapter 10 has three stories. One story, the first story we find that Jesus sends the 72 disciples. He sends them out. And the second story we find that this is the story of the Good Samaritan. We, there's a man who's traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. And there is an, an element of hospitality in that story as well. But the third story, we find Jesus coming into a village 
and he's hosted by these two women, two sisters, Mary and Martha. And in all these stories, there's also an element of traveling. In the first story, when Jesus sends the 72, they travel because they are sent. In the second story, the men who, there's a man who's traveling from, Jericho to Jer from Jerusalem to Jericho. There is traveling in that. And also in the third story, Jesus is traveling. That is when he becomes a, vi a visitor in one home. But what I find interesting in this, in this text today is that while many people will focus on Martha as one who accepted her role, a traditional role of being a woman in that context, her traditional role was that of being in the kitchen. And we know that it has happened in our own country that women at some point were seen as people who belonged in the kitchen. And she sits there Understanding that tradition or that context, she wants to prepare a meal for Jesus and the guests, while her sister on the other end sits in the other room and does something contradictory to what is expected because women could not be seen in the company of men. And she does, what she does, she goes and sits at the feet of Jesus, a privilege that was only for men and she goes and sits because she wants to hear the message from Jesus. Now, what I find interesting in these stories with what is happening with the Mandela Day is that while one sister is focusing on hospitality and service, the other sister is focusing on receiving the word of God. Now, for me, it simply means that when we do service or mission, it should not be just something that we do for the sake of doing mission because we are a church in mission, but there should be an element of the message of God in our mission. When we do good, when we are being hospitable, when we are offering service to others, there must be an element of the word of God, the story of God in what we are doing. We cannot just do that because it's... Because if, as a church, we do that, it becomes more of a social responsibility than mission to us. It becomes something any company can do, anyone, any NGO can do. But there should be a difference that when we do it as a church, there must be an element of theology, there must be an element of God in it. So what I'm trying to say here is that while many people will, some people have already done their service in, in terms of the, the Mandela Day activities, and some people will be doing that tomorrow and any other day from tomorrow. But what I'm trying to say here is that while a lot of people will be doing that for publicity and public relations, we must be different as a church. Because often people will do good for, <laughs> even the church is guilty of this, we do good projects or we do good mission for our reports so that we fill in reports for quarterly meetings, for synods, for, con for conferences, because this is what we are supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be sending reports. But we should be different in a way that we do not do good for taking pictures for social media to be seen as doing good. But when we do good, or when we are being hospitable, it should be coming from the heart, and it should tell the story of God. It should be witnessing to who God is, our hospitability should be something that tells the world that God is hospitable, that God is service, God helps others, God cares about other people, God loves people, God wants to be in the presence of, pe presence of people. That is why I'm saying while one sister was concerned and worried about how she's going to cater for her guests, another sister was concerned about the word of God in all this sin. While we do our mission, we should not do as the world does. We should find the story of God so that people can testify about this God. When we go to, when we start a soup kitchen or we go to an orphanage, those people that we are helping must be able to say, 
God visited us today. They must be able to say, through these people who came here, we felt the presence of God. Through these people who came to help us, we saw what God is. We have discovered God. We have got to know who God is. Because if we do not tell our story or do our good deeds with God in mind and presenting God, we'll be like anyone else, like any other company who's trying to run away from SARS and do something. <laughs> and does something good for the community. We'll be like, like any other NGO because we want a good report so that we get more funding. But as a church, but as Christians, as believers, as people who love God, when we are being hospitable, we must represent God. People must find the image of God in our doings. People must not only see God, but they must feel and hear God. Thank you. Can we pray? God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your time with us. We hope that as we have heard a word, we'll begin to see mission in a different way, that we'll find ourselves in your presence at all times, that all we do will be to glorify your name. It will not be about us, but it will be about you. We thank you for traveling with us as we will be going, continuing to do good to the world, and that as we do so, your glory will be, your name will be glorified and your kingdom will be discovered. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for your message, Andile. We're very grateful you came out of your yard and came to our, our church tonight. So thank you for, for sharing that. Um, I'm just going to start with some notices and then I'll ask the worship team to come up after that. Um, while I find the right page, um, this term... I don't know if you remember last year, there was a quiz night. Anyone remember that? Okay, so just to make sure I've got something to write on my report at the end of the term, <laughs> there will be a quiz night happening, um, hosted by the young adults, and I hope you guys will get excited about it and um, join us. So we'll be booking up tables up at the top hall, probably in September, but there'll be more details to follow. So you can just start getting excited about it today. Okay. Um, also, if you are visiting us, um, you'll notice in the pew in front of you, there's some really cool cards. We've got a welcome card for new visitors, as well as an information card for those of you who are part of the church but would like to update any details. Um, if you fill in your welcome card with your name, your email address, and you can just read through and tick a few of those options, there are some Wesley water welcome bottles. I think I mixed up some of those. Um, in the corner over there. So if you'll see me later in the welcome alcove, and I can give you one of your bottles then. Um, other upcoming events, we've got a men's breakfast on the 23rd of July, and there's guest speaker Eric Tocknell, and then there's also a pizza and testimony service coming up on Sunday the 31st of July, so it'll be during this normal evening service. And then you should notice that it's a little bit chilly tonight. Any of you feeling a bit cold? Yes? Do any of you have some extra blankets at home that you may be not using, maybe some extra jerseys? It's winter warmth. Um, Time, so if you've got any unused jerseys or blankets, would you please bring them to the church office and we can make sure that people who need them can use them. Cool, thanks so much. Can I ask the worship team to come up? Please stand as we sing our closing song, Wonderful is So Wonderful.
for coming out today. It was really cool to see you all. Just also a little welcome back to La Beaches. We've got Quinn and Amore back from Honeymoon. So yeah, if you get to say, a chance to say congratulations. And if there are any other people celebrating birthdays in the last week, put up your hand, do a dance. Kimmy, thanks for dancing. Um, anyone else? Cool. If you have had a birthday or you are having a birthday come up, I hope you have a wonderful day. And let us join hands and say the benediction. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 